What about if you have a collision that's not just nicely aligned like this, what if you have multiple dimensions involved? We're going to treat it very similarly. We'll start by identifying a closed system and writing down an equation representing conservation of momentum in the x direction. And then we'll do the same thing for the y direction. If we need to, we can combine those and get our overall magnitude and direction afterwards from those combinations. So we treat it the same, we conserve momentum, we try and do our closed system and conserve momentum for that system. And then we just split it into X components and Y components. Let's try an example. We have a traffic collision between a car of 1200 kilograms and a truck of 3000 kilograms. We're having a nice example where they're coming in at right angles to one another. I guess not that nice if you're in either one of these vehicles. But nice mathematically, I guess, for us to not have to worry about resolving things into different angles. And we then want to know, afterwards, they end up kind of tangled together, locked together in skidding. We want to know what's the velocity of the combined wreckage after the collision, but before they skid to a stop. Let's go ahead and try doing this. As we said, we'll label our initial state and then we'll draw a diagram of our final state here where they're combined together with some combined mass, which is the combined mass of the car and the truck, neglecting any bits of glass and stuff that may have broken off, times our final velocity, which is going in an unknown direction here. We'll conserve momentum because all of the interactions are internal to our system. And then we'll write that in terms of our system parameters. Initially, we have the mass of the car times its velocity plus the mass of the truck times its velocity. And finally, we have their combined masses times that final velocity. Now we'll consider the X components. And initially, only the car is going in the X direction. And then finally, there's some X component here. And we could try and do an unknown angle and do cosine of some unknown angle. That's fine if you want to it might be easier to do what I'm proposing here, which is just say, okay, it has some X component of the velocity and we'll solve for that as one of our unknowns. Here we have one equation. We can solve that for one unknown and we get our final velocity once we divide both sides by this combined mass of MCVC over the combination of MC plus MT. When you plug in your values, you get 4.76 meters per second. So that's our final X velocity and we can do the same thing in the Y, where we get only the truck is moving in the Y. And then finally, we have their combined mass that's moving with some unknown final velocity in the Y. We'll solve for this by dividing both sides by the combination of MC and MT as before. Plug in values and get 7.93 meters per second. What's our combined velocity at the end? Our combined final velocity is the X component in the I hat plus the Y component in the J hat with units of meters per second. That's a fine answer. That's the velocity of the combined wreckage. That is an expression of velocity. It has all the information you need to express a vector quantity. If you want it as magnitude and direction though, what we can do is we can, as we've done before, square these components add them, take the square root to get the magnitude, and, do, and also do the inverse tangent of the ratio to get the direction. Here you go. We get 9.25 meters per second as our magnitude in a direction that's 59 degrees above the horizontal.